Very good evening all. It's a great honor and pleasure for me to welcome you all to the webinar of Data Analyzing Using Smart PLS. First of all, I would like to warmly welcome the Head, Department of Accountancy and Finance, Professor D.G. Dharmaratna, the Senior Lecturer, Mr. Malip Amar Singha, the Project Coordinator ahead grants, Professor Jayanta Devasiri, the Activity Coordinator ahead grants, all the lecturers who join with us and our special invitees and my dear colleagues to this webinar, which is hosted by the Ahead Grants Department of Accountants and Finance, Sabaragamu University of Sri Lanka. Before starting the session, let me introduce our resource person, Professor G.T. Samarasinghe. He is currently serving as a professor in the Department of Industrial Management, Faculty of Business, University of Mordu. He served as the head of the Department of Management of Technology, University of Mordu from 2015 to 2020. He was graduate from University of Rajavardhanapura, Sri Lanka Securing, Bachelor of Science, Marketing Management, a special degree with a first class honors division. He obtained both MBA and PhD in marketing from University of Colombo, Sri Lanka. As the head of the Department of Management of Technology, he was an active member of the committee to transform the Department of Management of Technology into the Faculty of Business and to introduce the new degree of Bachelor of Business Science during the 2016 and 2017. Under his leadership, the Department of Management of Technology initiated the first ever Sri Lankan International Conference on Management of Technology in Sri Lanka in 2016. Further, he was, uh, he was in the Program Development Committee of the Department of IM to introduce the new specialization of financial service management in 2020, as well as the Master of Business Administration program in 2021. He has introduced the entrepreneurship and marketing advisory facility at the Department of IM for SMEs and schools in Sri Lanka since 2020. He has published over 30 research papers in both internationally and locally reputed journals on marketing and management and presented conference papers at more than 20 international and local research symposia. He has been a postgraduate MBA, TBA and PhD research supervisor as well as visiting academics for several foreign universities since 2012. His teaching and research interesting include marketing, consumer behavior, entrepreneurial marketing, and digital marketing. He has served as a member of the Educational Reform Committee of Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing since 2017 to 2020. He has been serving as council member of the Sri Lanka Institute of Service Management since 2020. So again, you are warmly welcome to our session with the most respect. So without further delay, let me hand over the session, Professor Chidit Samarasinghe, to share your valuable insights with us. So over to you. Thank you very much, Ms. Hiroshi, I think going to be exaggeration of no? your introduction. Uh, thank you very much again uh, for welcoming me right with your nice introduction. Uh, first, I should be thankful to Professor Jayanta Devasiri, one of my best friends in my academic life, and also uh, the head committee of University of uh, Sabaragamu, as well as the Head of the Department of Finance. I should be thankful for organizing this and giving me the opportunity. Also, you all are welcome. Some people, I think, they can mute the microphone. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, Paul, thank you very much, uh, Sabarkam University, including uh, head of the Department of Finance, as well as uh, Professor Devasiri for giving me this opportunity. And uh, you can see my screen. No, I have sent you two articles also, right? Uh, since we are discussing something relevant to SCA, first today I will do the very basic introduction, including uh, what is SCM and uh, what are the two approaches we use in SCM. Then I will approach our main software tool, Smart PLS. Uh, that's a basic plan today. Uh, we are having two more sessions in addition to this. Uh, today, base, basic introduction. Then I think Professor Jayanta proposed that 20th April, we will have the second session. No, Professor uh, Devasiri? Yes, sir. We are going to have the second session on 20th from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, again, 28th, uh, usually third one, final one uh, Thursday. 27th, uh, 28th. 27th, Wednesday, 28, no? yes, 8th. Wednesday, I have the Senate, that's the case, 27th. 28th, yeah. we can have the third session. Last yes, one. we can, yes. Okay, four to, four to six, thank you. Uh, therefore, uh, I think uh, you can uh, refer to these materials leisurely. I have given you two important articles. They talk about the differences in uh, smart PLS approaches and also uh, the different uh, uh, techniques they use. This might be useful maybe when you are really doing this one, one day, not today, but uh, something you need academically also, statistically also to back your model one day when you do your thesis or the research. That's why I'm giving you two important articles. One is this Henseller and Ringel, right? They are the founders of this smart PLS uh, approach, right? But if you look at PLS, there are different uh, techniques. But small PLS is heavily used by a lot of researchers for the last 20 years. That's why this is getting more familiar and more famous even in international context uh, and also in PhD thesis as well. Therefore, that's a very basic idea about smart PLS like uh, popularity, right? You can see that there are other smart, not smart, other PLS, MP, M plus. Likewise, you can see there are so many PLS software packages are there. But this one is very famous because of the practicality and the very simple approach to analyze complex model. Remember that. Now you know that there are different approaches to SCM. SCM means structural equation modeling. There are very famous software. One is AMOS, or some people say AMOS, or AMOS. Maybe many people are aware of that. For the last 30 years, it has been on a very uh, popular, right? Uh, uh, approach in many research, MOS. But if you look at smart PLS, or here we generally say PLS, partial least square method, right? That does PLS stands for. If you look at the basic difference, if someone asks SCM, uh, what is MOS, what is PLS? Basic difference, there are several differences, but one is MOS use covariance matrix, right? But you are not supposed to be an ex statistical expert. Uh, we are uh, discussing as managers, practitioners, but you should know some idea about what's the difference. That's why I'm telling that they use the covariance matrix. If you look at uh, MOS like software, right? But if you look at this uh, PLS approach, smart PLS, for example, they use variance matrix, variance matrix. That is some statistical differences you can see among these two uh, software, right? Categories available in the world. Therefore, there are two uh, groups also. Some people argue that uh, MOS is much better. Then there is another uh, school. They argue that uh, PLS is better. But uh, we as researchers in management uh, and also finance and other social sciences, uh, we, we, we should be uh, very practical. Sometimes you might have to use MOS. Sometimes you have to use PLS. Sometimes together even, right? Likewise, you can be more creative. Sometimes uh, you can start with PLS, uh, then later you can use MOS. That is also applicable. And uh, sometimes when you're having small samples, uh, PLS is more practical. Uh, if you look at MOS like, there are a lot of restrictions. MOS uh, SCM approach. The case is some people say that you need at least 250 sample size. You need multivariate assumptions like uh, parametric assumptions. Uh, for example, uh, multivariate normality. That is very critical thing in uh, MOS. If you don't have the normal distribution, bell-shaped curve, uh, you can't uh, uh, use uh, this MOS or else you have to transform the data. Then you have to uh, try to apply MOS. 
yeah, there are a lot of constraint and sample size you need big enough sample size for traditional uh, we call uh, uh, first generation uh, SCM. But now this is second generation SCM, right? Because this is a second generation. Here, uh, the, the nice of uh, PLS is that you can have small samples. Sometimes there are constraints, right? You can't have a big sample. Sometimes you might have maybe 50, 60, 100, likewise. In that case, smart PLS is more smart and practical. Practical is there. That is one situation. The other thing, if you don't have the normal distribution for your data set, right? You don't have the bell shaped curve for your construct or the indicators, right? Maybe that the individual indicator level or the multivariate level, if you don't have these two, uh, you can't uh, use this MOS. In that case also, we are having this relaxation of this, what you call uh, normality assumption, right? In PLS, that is another situation, right? Uh, before we talk about this, you should know the particular background, right? Sometimes in some forums, when you are presenting, some people are not aware of uh, this uh, PLS approach. Uh, they are very much uh, expert and aware of AMOS. That means uh, covariance matrix based uh, SCM, structural equation modeling. But you have to argue, defend yourself, right? I have that experience, some, some uh, very senior researchers for last uh, 20 years, right? They are doing this AMOS and they are very much, uh, they, they are worshiped. Uh, these MOs, right? Uh, they, they ask in forums, how can you use this one? Uh, then you have to sometimes argue in forums, right? In methodology. That's why this uh, knowledge is very important. Therefore, read these two articles leisurely. Uh, I will just brief what is there. Uh, then uh, I mentioned that two situations, right? Small sample size. And also, when you don't have the multivariate normality, this is another option, right? I think uh, in our undergraduate level, as well as postgraduate level, even PhD level today, people use PLS because of this practicality. And also you can use this for very complex models. Remember that. Sometimes in AMOS, there can be some restrictions. When you're having so many arrows, later we will discuss a model, right? When you're having so many arrows relationships, sometimes model is very complicated, complex. Therefore, this PLS is again recommended for very complex models as well, right? very complex models, but this is a very simple approach, very easy to uh, apply, but for very complex model. That is the third situation you should uh, uh, remember, right? When you argue for this uh, PLS. And there's a fourth thing like, uh, there are two things in uh, uh, what do you call this theory. One is uh, theory testing. Therefore in theory testing, especially theory testing means, let's say there is a already very established construct variable and the relationships explored and tested in the past in other journals or in other context. In that case, you can use this MOS theory testing. Therefore, MOS is very much favorable for theory testing, right? Already established construct and uh, relationships. Then again, you are trying to apply that, borrowing them, right in a different context sometimes maybe, but well established from the literature where you can use MOS. But assume a situation where exploratory type theory building, right? We call theory building especially, not theory testing. We call exploratory models. Like sometimes a totally new relationship, right? You identify new construct. First time you develop that construct, that measurement. Let's say you want to measure customer uh, loyalty from a different uh, perspective, right? which is not yet explored from that perspective. But there are so many measures of customer loyalty well established. In that case, you can use MOS, maybe. But let's say you develop a new measurement, uh, uh, measurement uh, construct and also a particular new relationship with a different variable uh, uh, for your research. Sometimes that can be relatively novel. We call exploratory models, right? Exploratory, new. That is sort of a theory building approach is there where you can use smart PLS. These are some of the very favorable circumstances where you can use smart PLS, remember, right? But when you read these articles and when you further refer to literature, Google Scholar, right? You can find so many things. Still, this is being developed. You should know that as well, right? If you look at every year, they do a lot of uh, development and improvements, right? Uh, therefore, you have to keep in right touch with this uh, developments in uh, smart PLS, right? If you go to the websites, uh, 
uh, you can see I have sent you the particular link, right? I assume you have downloaded and installed uh, that one. That's the basic background. If you have any clarification, you can ask even uh, right during the session also. Uh, that's fine. Or at the end, you can ask. I hope you got my email. I have given you the particular links, right, to download. Here, there are two links. One is to download the Smart PLS student one, right? Today, we are discussing and using the student version. Uh, the reason is that uh, if you download the other one, that's a professional one, only 31 days or 30 days, you can use that. After that, you have to buy the license. If not, uh, you can't again uh, have the uh, trial version or professional version on your laptop, right? That's the case. Uh, then uh, you have to have a different laptop, right? It's very difficult to, uh, then you have to format and again, right? Uh, uh, run the software and install a professional version, right? That's the case. If not, you have to buy that. If you are doing your own research, you can uh, buy your, you can use a professional version for one month, right? That's the case. But uh, that's why I have given you this, uh, what do you call uh, smart PLS student version. This is lifetime, right? But there are some restrictions. As a student, as a practitioner, you can use a smart PLS student version. Uh, there are some restrictions. One is you are having only maximum, you can have only 100 cases, right? Sample size, cases, so the sample size, 100. But if you look at a professional version, right? Uh, you can have, right, uh, so many options, big samples, and also very nice, uh, right, uh, formatting you can do, right? Coloring. Uh, and also exporting data into other formats like R, Excel, you can do those things in the professional version. Uh, that's why I ask you to download the student version, but if you need uh, maybe for your research later, you can consider trial version or professional version, or you can buy that. Uh, therefore, I think uh, you might have downloaded that one, I assume that's a very simple thing. If you go to the smart PLS websites, all the instructions are there, right? How to do that? With few clicks, you can uh, download and install that, right? The student version without any uh, key, key no, no any license key, right? Uh, for the student version. I think you have downloaded that one. Uh, no issues about that, right? That's very user friendly. Uh, and if you are having any issues, uh, they give you frequently asked questions also. Therefore, you can uh, see what are the issues and they support. Even the support services are also there. I think uh, Professor Jayant, uh, you have downloaded and installed that one, no? Yes, of course. Okay, okay. Okay, once you have downloaded and installed the student version or any version, you can see on your desktop, this Smart PLS 3, right? The latest one. We had uh, previous ones, but latest one is uh, Smart PLS 3. Uh, therefore, you can, down, uh, you, can, uh, you can double click on this one. Then you can see this uh, user interface if you are having the proper installation. I assume uh, you are okay up to this point. Now, maybe first time uh, you can't see anything here, right? On the project explorer, you can't see anything here. Then uh, first thing is you have to go to file, create a new project. You will assume uh, you are going to uh, test your model. You have done a survey. Uh, then in that case, uh, you are having uh, a lot of quantitative variables, which can be nominal, ordinal, interval, ratio. We use very much uh, smart PLS or the SCM approaches for social research. Where you are having a lot of construct, uh, which are, uh, we say that uh, latent construct. That means uh, not the concrete concepts. You measure something like brand loyalty, uh, investor uh, attitudes, investor loyalty. These are some of the attitudinal variables we say that. You can't touch it. 
you can't see that but we measure those using several questions right these questions can be uh, sometimes nominal you know basic statistics and the scales of measurements right Dinesh, you are on mute. Okay, now can you see and hear? Yes, we can okay. see. Okay, okay. Then uh, you can go to file, create a new project. Oh, here also you can do that, right? Both options are there. Same thing you can do on this menu also, right? Uh, new project. Or you can go to file, create new project. Then you can give a name, right? I will give SAB something. You can give whatever the name for your project. Okay. Then you can see here. New project is created. But still you don't have any data set. Let's say you collected data, uh, giving a questionnaire, you have a survey approach. Then simply you have to double click here and you can import the data set under the project. And this is the particular model. This step you can see it's a model, but still we haven't uh, drawn the model, developed the model. Uh, therefore, under your project, there are two icons you can see. This is the particular data icon, data import uh, icon. The other one is model uh, development icon. Hope you can see this. You will see the same results when you apply this by yourself. And uh, in my email, I send you a data set also. I think you have got this one. Two articles I sent you. And also I sent you a particular model uh, as exercise. Most probably next week we will do that one more comprehensively. Uh, and also this data set I sent. You will see this one. If you have downloaded, you can see this. Uh, by my name, you can see, right? This uh, data set. Reduce 95 cases. Dot CSV file format, you can see that. If you have downloaded that one. Now, once you have opened the project, first you should have the data set on your folder. Let's say this is the data set which I emailed you. If you have downloaded, you can see that. This is sort of an Excel format. It's sort of an Excel format. But this is not the normal Excel format. I will show you how to do that. If you are having, uh, let's say, SPSS or normal Excel uh, worksheet, you have to uh, convert it in, this into comma.csv format, comma separated, delimited file format. I will show you how to do that. It's a very simple step. Let's say this is a data set, this is an Excel one. Okay, on the chat box, you can see uh, the data set is uh, shared and also uh, my PDFs are also shared. You can see that. If you don't have now, you can download data set also. Now, this is the particular data set I have entered. You can see, but uh, you can have very nicely, you can enter your data set, but this is simply the data set. But remember, with this normal Excel format, I can't uh, perform particular PLS analysis. I have to go to file and save this as different format. When you go to save options, you can give whatever the file name you want. Now, by default, this is Excel workbook. Here, there are so many formats, but you have to find this one, CSV format in Excel. We call comma delimited format, comma separated 
format comma delimited format right you have to save into normal excel or it can be uh, spss data set right spss file into csv format remember that i have done that i have given you the csv format right therefore you don't have to do that now yeah but you can see it's different right this is uh, you can see the extension csv this is simply my survey data set if you are having a questionnaire survey then you can see uh, you are different questions some are indicator some are measured as uh, maybe 10 point scale based on your particular operationalization and literature uh, some are different maybe likert scale format uh, you can have different formats also it's depend on your uh, uh, research and the logics and also some can be uh, sort of uh, you can say uh, what do you call binary variables or let's say uh, gender male female or different categorical variable nominal variable right uh, you can see yeah it can be nominal ordinal interval or ratio you can uh, import whatever the uh, things relevant to your model uh, you measured from the survey now that's the first step you have to create a particular comma uh, delimited file format in excel it should be ready now i have created the project then simply i have to double click to import data then you had to go to that particular file format you had to find that what you saved there i double click i go to my folder then you can see this is a particular data set excel comma separated values file csv format i double click it okay now you can see can you see my screen yes we can see okay then you can see your data set here this is the file i have 95 cases since this is student version i can't have more than 100 i have created a reduced version you can see here indicators or the questions in your survey then these are the case numbers or the respondents in your data set here 95 uh, respondent sample size if there are missing values uh, you have to treat them uh, before this right uh, maybe in excel or spss you have to do some treatments uh, you have to make the data set ready without missing values and also there are some maybe comma so some maybe issues are there you can't see this format remember sometimes when some people are trying to import this into uh, this this format uh, in the pls project uh, it is not properly coming then there is a error or something that means again you have to go to the original file and see any missing values or any commas dots sometimes might be there when you enter data in that case you can't see this properly yeah but again you have to uh, go back and create the original data file maybe spss so excel one correct again you have to convert that into comma.csv format and uh, import that if you having the proper data set you can see here these are the indicators for the indicator correlations are also there that is automatically calculated and this is a raw data file so raw data file this original data file you had that format you can see there this is condensed that's why it's not clear if you go to indicators you can see mean value sometimes you can do some observation here also remember that is very important right some homework why i am saying so this homework is important sometimes you can see whether you are having uh, some maybe minimum maximum values very abnormal again you can see some maybe uh, outliers but uh, you could have treated them uh, before you come to pls in the spss so excel but here also you can see if there are any issues sometimes uh, 
may be abnormal cases, outliers. And remember, here there is another thing, standard deviation, what you know. In any variable, if the standard deviation, or sometimes it's an indication of variance of each variable, if this is zero, there can be issue in your model when you run uh, in smart PLS. Remember, when there's a standard deviation zero, zero variance, there is no way to run this algorithm. Remember, these are some of the errors we get when you run a smart PLS. When there is no variance, this variable cannot work with other variables and you cannot uh, uh, calculate the necessary uh, indexes. That problem is there. Yapo, please be careful. It's a very common error. Sometimes maybe many variables are having uh, zero value. In that case, sometimes again, smart PLS uh, might uh, not be able to perform. That means uh, you have to make sure you are not having for variables, uh, zero standard deviation. I think it's a common sense. You, you need some variance, you no know, standard deviation. Then only you can calculate various matrix. And also you can see the skewness, something relevant to uh, kurtosis. You can see something relevant to uh, what you call normality. But here it's relaxed, no need to be normal. Even normal, it's no issue. No need to be normal. Even normal data also, you can use this. Normal or non-normal. That is relaxed. Later we will discuss why it is that. Now uh, this is uh, ready, you can see. Now my project is this. File I imported, that is clearly visible. That means uh, there are no entering errors. And also standard deviation also uh, acceptable, no zero values. Then I click on this icon, the model. When you double click on this, you get a particular uh, blank sheet canvas on which you can draw the model. I double click that. When you double click, you can see there is a canvas coming. You can see left side, down there you can see the indicators. These are the particular questions, indicators, measures in the questionnaire. Indicators, indicators. When you click these icons, you can sometimes see, I do some changes. But here at the moment, we don't need uh, to see anything. Then this canvas is there. Tell me you are okay or not up to this point. I think I, even Mr. Mahesh is there, no DD Mahesh. We are okay, you can continue, sir. Okay, okay. And further this left side, you can see there's a color palette also, right? When you click that, you see that. But the case is in student version, you can't use this. Uh, there are some uh, restrictions. That's why uh, you have to go to the professional version. That is more, uh, uh, more I think, uh, user friendly. And also you can do a lot of coloring effects and also a lot of presentable, uh, what you call models you can develop in the professional version with the color palette and other things. Even more themes you can have, different themes. You can apply, you can leisurely try this. First, you have to draw the model. Now you are getting two things, data set and the canvas, empty one. Then remember, I have emailed you a particular model. I think uh, you got that now. This is the example which I developed as an example for you to practice. Next week we will discuss this is a sort of advanced model we call higher order one. Next week I will discuss higher, what is higher order. And I have developed another simple model for today's analysis. This is a model. We'll try to assume there are four variables in your research. This is not a part of a smart PLS. This is something in your research proposal or in your research methodology chapter or before that, based on the literature you develop, conceptual framework, conceptual model. 
then you are having several variables here for example i take one as reputation in short the other one satisfaction other one loyalty the other one price effect then there are arrows you can see arrows if you know uh, survey research and the conceptualization theorization you see these arrows are the sort of directions and we write them as hypotheses hypotheses and these are the variables or the construct then these arrows link two variables they are becoming hypotheses but in our research we want to measure these relationships and also here you can see moderation effect why i am saying this is moderating it's a dotted line arrow and also this arrow is going to an arrow not to a particular circle or variable or construct that's why we say this relationship is moderated by price next week or week after we can discuss those things some advanced analysis mediation and moderation for the moment this is the model then my target is to draw the model today and look at the validity and reliability that's the first step in any scm not only smart pls uh, even uh, what you call covariance based uh, mos they use two approaches when you develop a model and test the model one thing is draw the model test the outer model that's step 1 second step is to test the inner model or the structural model those are the two steps if you are reporting your research data analysis in smart pls or amo so any any sca there are two main steps i think i have given you this article they are they talk about that one that's why uh, it's very important for you to refer to this article lecture when you draw any model there are two components of the model one thing is outer model you can see these circles are linked by arrows this part we call inner model i right? remember that way inner model that means your hypothesis the relationship between independent dependent variable for example we call inner model our interest is to test this inner model but without checking the quality of the model outer model you can't test the inner that's very simple logic therefore there are two steps in uh, any scm amo so smart pls first you have to test the outer model outer model talks about these boxes right you can see outer model they talk about each and every indicator let's say some questions in your questionnaire how well they are fitted to each construct or the variable first you have to measure those whether your questions are reliable or valid something like that we call outer model first you have to check the outer model validity and reliability uh, sometimes you might have heard that then only improving the outer model whether it is acceptable valid and reliable then only we come to the inner model or the structural model remember that that's a very basic thing you should know before you draw any scm you should know that thing in this article you can see uh, samya they talk about that approach also uh, this i have given you this outer model assessment inner model assessment step 1 is outer model right outer model talks about the reliability and validity if the outer model is acceptable valid and reliable then only you go to inner model inner model we call structural model another term outer model we call measurement model maybe perhaps you might know this maybe your academic staff might be already doing this sort of studies yeah but this is uh, not uh, anything new to them uh, but sometimes for undergraduates uh, or people who are new to scm uh, this might be useful knowing the basics of reporting even if you are submitting a journal article they are looking at the reviewers these two things uh, carefully if you read this article uh, you can uh, find those that's why this article is a good coverage of uh, the basics of a smart pls right this is the model i use today this is a version of the model which i emailed you but uh, which i emailed you is somewhat advanced model there were some other variables also next time we will discuss that 
today i will try to draw this model and look at outer and inner outer means outside this right outside this uh, circle there are indicators i will show you that when i draw that inner means these relationships or the structural model remember always in scm there are two approaches in this one i have some hypothesis also but before that you have to draw the model uh, therefore i will first go to that part is very easy and very user friendly now you can see here on the menu you can see there are latent variables and there are connectors these two are very important when you draw the model now you are having a mind model no analytical model conceptual model you have in your proposal or in your literature review at the end now you are to me measure that or that you have to draw it is a select this the, first you have to select this one right click on this once you click this you can select anything right now i want to draw the model which i show you here there are four variables then you need four circles i click this then you can see this is selected highlighted i go to the canvas and simply click then i get one circle if i need another one i have already selected you have to simply again click on the canvas two three four only i need four no? now i go to the select button and click that right now it's deselect now you are having four variables this is your conceptual framework now these are red color that means first when you get this you get the red color within the circle now i can label this very simple click on this select this right click rename rename now you can give whatever the name you want if you can remember your model reputation repute then you can see that is free name this very easy price select this right click satisfaction loyal right now i have renamed the variables i assume you are okay up to this point now then i have to draw the model arrows arrows are there arrows means simply you develop from literature your hypothesis the relationships we see reputation directly influencing uh, loyalty or the reputation directly influences satisfaction satisfaction influences uh, loyalty that is one model i go to select i select that and i go to connect i select this connector arrow then it is highlighted then i want to draw the model but if you want to again uh, move these uh, circles again you have to go to select click select then this is deselected right very simple i go to connect reputation directly influence loyalty then the other one reputation directly influences satisfaction you can do this trial and error then again satisfaction influences loyalty and remember in my model i have another hypothesis that is about price effect as a moderate but here there are two arrows price influence satisfaction in addition that moderate the relationship between these two variables that is based on your literature review 
but for the moment i create a link between price and satisfaction remember i cannot create an arrow linking to this arrow though in my conceptual framework moderate is shown like this dotted arrow right but i can't draw it in pls there is a technique later i will discuss how to draw it for the moment i can draw only this one that means in smart pls you can't uh, draw arrows linking to these arrows there is a different technique for that later i will show how to create moderate effect for the moment don't worry about that we can measure that one in a different technique in smart pls we call creating moderate effect uh, that icon is here you can see that there moderating effect but for the basic model uh, we won't be worried about that now but now i have created this one but still these are red color remember when the model is properly created linking the data set this would be a different color for example it should be blue color but it still model is not active see there is a error when you go to this variable no this latent variable has no indicators that means no indicator set link indicators means your data survey data empirical data then simply you have to do this you have to look at what are the measures of reputation now in this case i have measures of reputation here several measures of reputation one is uh, one set is about uh, quality quality one quality two another set of indicators linked to reputation is le uh, leadership one two three and also another thing re relevant to reputation is in my survey questionnaire corporate social responsibility one two and also corporate governance one two three and also uh, financial performance one two three these are some of the things which i borrowed from the literature therefore you might have different model that is up to you to decide in, when you develop the question yeah. now my task is to select all these and complete the model with the indicators indicators means the particular observable measures that means the questions indicators in my question yeah, which i measured using uh, ordinal nominal interval or ratio then i have to select them and drag them very simple quality i have to simply select this and drag this now you see it's getting active you know this color came quality one if you want you can click this and click the delete button simply you can delete this that is also possible now i have to drag all this therefore simply i can select first one click shift select one first quality one then keep the shift button right keeping that you have to select all these with the shift now all are selected then simply drag those it's a very simple method while holding the shift key you have to select all these then you have to simply drag or if you want you can drag each one individual but this is the easy method while holding the shift key you can select all these then you can drag once now first variable we call this is the independent variable as per my model independent variable now that is completed that's why this color came now this is a part of the outer model no which i mentioned is still not completed uh, relevant to the reputation outer model is completed i am having about uh, 12 about 12 variables to measure the reputation reputation measured using corporate responsibility one part 
financial performance, governance of the company, uh, leadership of the company, uh, quality of the product and services. All well, these are some of the measures of reputation. Remember, now you have to do the same process, follow the same process uh, for other construct as well. Loyalty. You can select the first indicator, then hold the shift key and select other three as well. Only three indicators are there for the loyalty. Then drag them to the relevant circle. Now this is there. And another very basic thing you should know, if you want to uh, maybe change the direction of these indicators, simply you have to click on the particular circle. Here loyalty, I click, right click. If you want, you can hide them. See, you can do those things also. These are trial and error. You can do this. I have to deselect since uh, I have selected already right disconnectors. Again, you click on loyalty, right click, show indicators. See, show indicators. Sometimes, uh, maybe when you present your final model, these indicators might not be needed maybe when you show the final model uh, in the last part in that case you can hide them if you want again you can show them that option is also there then further you can show the direction now these are to the left side no but uh, it is not uh, very nice on my model no therefore i want to maybe align them towards the top see select this right click on your particular construct or the variable then align left you can do align right. See, align downward. Those options are there. Now here, here also I hide it, no? Show indicators, hidden ones. These are very basic uh, options you can see. Very basic operations. You can simply Right, drag this and change the position of the variables. Then uh, I want to complete this for other variables as well. Satisfaction, uh, I'm measuring using only one, but in your case, you might have maybe more than one indicator. Yeah, I have only one, therefore I drag it. Then that's there. I want to show. I have hidden that. Change the direction. Price. Price, I have two indicators. You can have them uh, to the bottom. Now my model is linked to the indicators. That's why this is there, right? Uh, you can see a uh, circle now blue colored. That means uh, circles are active. They are linked to the indicators. Indicators means the outer model. They are linked to the data set. That means the model is uh, completed. You can see. You can see inner model now. Inner model means the relationship between these independent, dependent, and also mediator variables, and also moderators. But outside those, you can see arrows. That means circles are linked to these small boxes we call indicators or the elements, observable ones, we call outer model. Now my model is something like this. You can draw that to make it a sense. I see reputation. Reputation directly influences loyalty of the customers. Further reputation influences satisfaction. Satisfaction influences loyalty. That means satisfaction is becoming a mediator. That is your research and literature knowledge. Tell me, are you okay up to this point?
any clarification this is about basic operations how to draw the model you can change the colors in professional version there is a color palette but here it is not active those are some of the issues in student version professor devasiri is it clear up to this point yes it is clear sir okay and another thing this is uh, 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 something novel in smart pls if you look at this is a reflective model why i am saying so this is a reflective model i will explain this is something uh, important you can see these arrows are headed towards these boxes no you can see from the circle arrows are coming towards these boxes this is a reflective model sometimes there can be some research formative models i can right click switch between formative reflective now see now where are the arrows arrows are headed towards the circle now from the box towards the circle we call this a formative construct it's a formative construct but if you look at loyalty which is a reflective one why from the circle the arrows are headed towards indicators boxes this is a reflective measurement part right this loyalty is measured as a reflective construct but reputation is measured as a formative construct this is guided by the theory but the nice thing in smart pls is that you can have both formative and reflective construct but in amos you can't have that option that is some unique significant part of uh, smart pls and pls packages now if i want i can change the direction i can make it reflective see that is important thing you should know the difference between uh, pls and amos many people who use amos they always assume this sort of models that means reflective that means from the variable the 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 other indicators are reflected that means from the variable arrows are headed towards particular indicators right you can see that that's a particular what you call reflective measurement model this is what you call reflective measurement model you measure the reputation from the reflective perspective that means first reputation is happening when there is organization reputation only these things are present that means this is the independent sort of construct which create some results in terms of corporate social responsibility Uh, appears financial performance appears when there is a reputation so, sort of a causal effect is there causality towards this indicators but if you look at other way this is formative why corporate social responsibility create reputation first see first corporate social responsibility is happening then only reputation related things are happening this is first this is second this is independent that means these indicators are independent reputation is dependent your larger construct is dependent indicators are independent try to remember formative model is like that but in amos you can't have this model in amos you can have only what do you call reflective model in pls you can have both you can have both that's a unique thing in uh, pls that's why another reason why pls is getting more uh, popular there are some research you are having a model like this formative models that means indicators are the causes of the larger construct or the particular larger variable which is uh, latent we call latent variables unobservable variables i don't know whether it's clear maybe uh, some people might have an idea this is something advanced and novel in pls you can't see this in amos 
in MOS, you are having always arrow headed towards uh, the indicators. We call uh, something like this reflective, reflective measurement model. Here you can have both together even, or you can have both reflective and measurement. One variable is uh, formative, other one is reflective. You can have something like that, mixed models also, mixed measurement models. Now I have developed the model. Then my part is to run the model. Then there's a calculate, calculate button here. You can see, calculate. Or you can go to calculate here. Either is possible. When you go to this menu, you can see PLS algorithm, bootstrapping, there are two things. When you go to calculate button also, you can see PLS algorithm, bootstrapping. There are several, later we can discuss this confirmatory tetrad analysis and also multi-group analysis we can discuss in the future. Then these two are very important, PLS algorithm, bootstrapping and also here there is another thing, consistent PLS algorithm. Here also the same thing is there, but consistent, remember. Now I will go to, now can you tell me whether this is a totally reflective or measurement uh, uh, construct model? It's a formative model or reflective model, this one. Now this visible one, arrows, arrows are headed towards outside the circle. Any feedback? This is a reflective model, sir. Yes, correct, correct. But remember, smart PLS was initially developed for formative models, formative models. That means if you look at smart PLS before 15 years back, they had this sort of models always. That means formative, formative. Therefore, they had normal PLS algorithm and bootstrapping. But remember, later PLS introduced this option. That means uh, you can have both uh, formative and reflective or all are reflective, like this. In that case, they introduced later consistent PLS algorithm. They are isolated. Now this is consistent, why? These are totally reflective. Therefore, you have to select consistent PLS algorithm, but some people use even for this sort of models, normal algorithm. Sometimes uh, there can be uh, very similar results in certain cases, but my advice is if you are having reflective model like this, use consistent PLS algorithm and consistent PLS uh, bootstrapping. Sometimes you might have one variable reflective, Another variable like this, let's say loyalty formative. In that case also, you have to use consistent PLS algorithm, consistent bootstrapping, remember. But if you are having all formative, then you have to go to original one, normal PLS algorithm and bootstrap. But in AMOS, you are having only always reflective. Now for the moment, I assume all reflective for the moment. Therefore, I go for calculate consistent PLS algorithm, consistent PLS algorithm here, yes. Now I, I am going to run the algorithm. It's developed to maximize the variance. That's a variance based uh, method. But if you look at MOS like, they are trying to reflect the covariance matrix. That's the target of the algorithm. But here target is uh, to maximize the variance between the, right, the particular construct. Now here I click, uh, select connect all latent variables for initial calculation. I click select that. I go to partial least squares. Maximum number of iterations, 300. But if you want, you can change this. For the moment, I will keep this. But uh, when you refer to literature, the advice, you need uh, sometimes 500 minimum, but it takes time, remember. When you run the PLS algorithm, you have to be online. 
that means this this is uh, this algorithm is run online with their server therefore better to be online when you run this algorithm and also bootstrapping later we will discuss here there are several methods centroid method they use the uh, central point mean value uh, there is a factor model there is a path model for the moment i will select path model because this is a, we are looking at the path coefficients that's our interest but later i will discuss what is factor 1 also in advanced analysis then here stop criterion up to very minimal point we take up to uh, this seven right that means up to the very uh, this minimum decimal point up to that point they run the model which one right comes first they stop with the maximum iterations can come to 300 or even before that you can come to this level uh, minimal value of the stop criterion they will stop running the particular algorithm that's a that's a rule in the program they have developed don't worry about that you can follow these basic steps then there's a weighting scheme also but for the moment we don't have any weighting factor or vector right we don't have something like that but if you want you can go weight uh, selecting a particular variable uh, which is meaningful sometimes but for the moment i don't have any weighting vector right that's all then i have to start calculation Now you get uh, several documents. Now you are having your original data set. You are having your model now, see? Now there are path values. In a model path values are there. These are really sort of, you can see uh, beta coefficients. If you are running a normal regression in SPSS, you can see the, uh, what do you call the impact, no? Beta values. These are the beta values, path coefficients. But outside you can see, you can see the, what do you call, these are the factor loadings. Factor loadings you can see. That means how much each indicator, right, uh, contributed uh, to each uh, construct. You can see that. We call the path values, what, what do you call, uh, what do you call this is uh, factor loadings, right? Factor loadings. You can see the factor loadings. But our threshold level is 0.7. Some people say 0 0.5, but uh, 0 0.7 is the ideal value. If you want to say each uh, particular uh, path is significant or not, uh, if you want to look at, it should be 0 0.7 and above. If not, you have to delete these indicators. That is one uh, way to look at whether indicators are acceptable and reliable. You can see here. If you look at each variable, you can see the Factor loadings, factor loadings. Even in SPSS also, you can see when you do principal component analysis, so something you can see uh, path values, not path values, uh, factor loadings are there, right? Factor loadings. Now here, there are poor values. These poor ones, I had to delete. I had to remove and again, rerun the model. Whereby I can improve the later average variance extracted and other things later we will discuss. Then further you get another thing, reports. Look at here, the reports are there. In the professional version, you can simply export them into uh, Word or Excel. But here you can't do that. Now you can see here path coefficients. Path coefficients means uh, these inner model values. You can see reputation is influencing loyalty positively. That path value is point. 8.8, sort of a beta-like, beta value. You can see that here also in the reports. As a graph also, you can see that. As a matrix also, you can see that. Now, when you go to this, you can see final results, path coefficients, indirect effects, later we will discuss next time for the mediation and moderation, total effects, Outer weights, outer loadings is very important here. These are the factor loadings. This is what you see on the figure. Look at factor loadings are here. Those things are again in reports. For your thesis, if you want, you can uh, simply uh, export them into a document.
Further, you can see the residuals. Perhaps you might need residuals for later analysis for some advanced analysis. R square value is very important when you run normal regression also in SPSS. You know coefficient of determination. Uh, it is one indicator of looking at the uh, explanatory power of the model. That means the amount of variance explained by the independent variables. R square. There is another thing, remember, we will discuss later, F square. This is also another quality criteria. Now, if you look at AMOS like, there are some quality estimators of the model, right? Uh, in AMOS. In PLS also, there are certain quality criteria for the model, uh, for the outer model as well as for the overall model. Therefore, remember, there are certain things when you report the uh, quality indicators, you have to report these things. One is R square, the other one is F square. F square is something derived from R square about the effect size, whether each effect is uh, significant or not, sufficiently large or not. You can look at by looking at the F square. Then construct reliability and validity. That means whether your model is good or bad, outer model, we call measurement model, Kronberg alpha. Usually we say 0.7 and above is uh, uh, sufficient for the reliability of the particular construct or the variable front by alpha. And also another one here, composite reliability. That is also another reliability of the overall construct. This is more uh, valid than front by alpha. That is looking at the overall model, structural model, and looking at the reliability of each variable. Therefore, it should also be a 0.7 and above. And remember, average variance extracted. This is also very important. Uh, sometimes uh, you talk about construct validity. Construct validity in your model. Whether you have a particular concept, for example, here, uh, reputation, construct, whether it's valid. Whether it's really measured by the particular indicators. Whether you are measuring what you want to measure. That's a particular indicator, right? We call AVE very famous, average variance extracted. This should be at least 0.5 and above. Now look, you can look at here price and reputation. This is very poor. Then you are to improve this at least 0.5 you need. Then what can, can you do? You have to go here and look at what are the poor factor loadings in indicators. I said that cestrol level should be 0. 7 and above, ideal. Sometimes if you want, you can keep even 0. 0.6 and above, right? Don't always let the statistic decide that. But these things you can remove. Example, uh, corporate shows responsibility too, you have to remove. Uh, finance too, you can remove. Likewise, but some, uh, this one, if you remove, you might lose this part. That's why you need a lot of multiple indicators. That's why if you are having a particular model building approach, exploratory model, has a lot of uh, indicators. Later, you can reduce them uh, when you do the fact analysis like this. When you remove and run the analysis, again, you can improve this, right? That's the logic, AVE. When you remove some of the things of the reputation, you can improve this up to 0.5 and above. That's how you, you can do this back and forth exercise, this is. Not like AMOS, you can be very user friendly. You can quickly remove and run the model. And again, try to improve these indicators. These are some of the things we call part in the particular outer model, measurement model. Before you look at the inner model, path model, regression, you have to improve the model by looking at these particular criteria. <laughs> then here, calculate, we did this path Coefficient estimation, no, using consistent algorithm. Now there is another one, consistent PLS bootstrapping. Why bootstrapping? PLS use bootstrapping technology to create subsamples. Now I said that PLS you can use when you're having even a small sample. Some say that at least 50 would do. If you're having 50, you can run PLS. But 50 might not be sufficient for PLS to estimate. Therefore, PLS use bootstrapping. What is bootstrapping? That's a particular technique to generate subsamples. Subsamples. You can go to bootstrapping here. Using your here 95 cases, 
PLS create 500, but you can improve that. If you are having a final research, at least uh, the methodology literature advice that you need 5,000. Remember, you need 5,000. That means out of your data set, out of your 95 cases, respondents data set, smart PLS generate 5,000 subsamples and they look at, they estimate the particular distribution. That's why you don't have, you, you can violate in your data set, original data set, normality assumption. That create a particular distribution, like a population like estimation that create using this bootstrapping technique. Therefore, for your final sample, final analysis, have subsample at least 5,000. 5,000 is recommended. But remember when you improve this one, when you run the particular uh, bootstrapping, it takes sometimes two, three minutes, right? The processing time uh, takes. Now for the moment, I will take 500. If you put uh, 5,000, it takes sometimes based on your computer's capacity, processing speed, maybe five, six minutes, it might take sometimes bootstrapping. And here also, I say do parallel processing. I have selected. That's a best practice. And amount of results. If you are running a very basic one, you can say basic bootstrapping. But for your final one, for all the maybe indexes, calculations, if you need, uh, you can say complete bootstrapping. I select complete bootstrapping. For the final one, this is recommended. Complete bootstrapping. Where you can have correlation coefficient and so many, so many uh, measurements, it complete when you have complete bootstrapping, remember. Now, the yeah, advanced setting is also there, but for the moment, by default, we select bias corrected and accelerated bootstrapping. But there are some percentile bootstrapping and other uh, techniques are there. But for the moment, we use this bias corrected one. And uh, if you want, you can change your significance level. If you need 95% confidence level, I take significance level at 0 0.05. But if you want, you can change that. But by default, it's there. Further, if you need one tail or two tail, I for the moment I keep two tail, but if you are having uh, directional hypotheses, sometimes uh, then you can go for one tail, right? But for the moment I will uh, keep two tail distribution, right? Two tail uh, distribution. Then that's a very basic thing. These things are what we did in the Algorithm uh, testing also, therefore not changing in the weighting vector also not selected. Bootstrapping, 5,000 is recommended. Start calculation. Look at if you have 5,000, it takes much time. That generate 500 subsamples with replacement. It replace and again calculate. Again, you get another report, look at. Earlier you had PLS algorithm one. Now you are having bootstrapping report. Before I go to that one, I go to again my original graph. You can see that. Now you are having a different thing, not the path, uh, path values here, not the factor loadings here. These are the T values, T values in the T distribution, T values, other side of the P value, right? Probability value. These are the T values. Normally we say that whether the path is significant or not, we look at, uh, we assess by using the T value or the P value. T value is above 1.96. That means P value is less than 0 0.05, other side of the coin, right? If you want to test a hypothesis, whether it is significant at 0 0.05 level, T value should be above 0 0.05, so, sorry, T value should be above 1.96. Here it's 11 sum. That means this relationship is significant statistically. But if you want, you can get instead of P values, what you are familiar with P values here. Look at here. You can choose that. In a model, T values, you can change into P values. Outer model, T values, you can change into P values. See? Less than 0.05. Zero, close to zero. That means uh, my uh, this relationship significant at 0 0.05. Your reputation influence price. Sorry, uh, this influence satisfaction, right? 
That is also significant. Since my p-value is less than 0 0.05, you can reject the null hypothesis uh, and uh, say that there is a impact of reputation on satisfaction. This is the p-value, but other side of the t-value, about 1.96 means less than 0 0.05. But if you want to show this on your thesis, you can get both p-value and the path coefficient. Therefore, I get this path coefficients and p-values. That is very nice, no? Then you can see the beta value within bracket, you can see p-value. Even for factor loadings also, you can get the same. Now my beta value is, path value is 0.848. Which is significant since p value within bracket less than 0 0.05. This is better for you to report when you test the hypothesis. This is the inner model, but my concern is not inner model first, outer model or the measurement model. Yeah, you have to remove these things. Look at these lower ones are not significant. P value is above 0 0.05. That's why you can remove this one and rerun the model to improve the average variance extracted, right? Remember, these are some of the things you should be mindful about when you do this uh, model estimation. This is the very basic approach for you to learn how to draw the model, uh, how to assess the outer model, how to assess the inner model. It's a very, very basic model, but in the future we can discuss uh, mediation, moderation, and also multi-group analysis and uh, some tetrad analysis. Any clarification up to this point? Maybe uh, I have given you the data set. You can leisurely try this at home. Any issues next time uh, you can again uh, ask for clarifications. And there is a message in a uh, chat box. Yes, uh, explain the difference between reflective and formative. Yes, very good question, I think. For the people who do first time, uh, even some people don't know whether they are a formative one. Uh, even people who do MOS always they think that always measurement model is reflective. But uh, now the trend in the world, you can see something, uh, certain concepts can be measured from formative perspective as well. I will give a simple example. If you look at something like this, uh, then it's formative means like this. Arrows directed towards a particular construct. That means particular before the particular construct, these indicators results, right? In, they first happens. After that only they result in the larger unknown construct. I can give simple example. A person's stress level, very simple example for a layman to understand. Let's say you want to measure the stress of a person. The level of stress can happen due to several indicators, which are like independent variables, independent, uh, what you call indicators. It can be uh, maybe job loss of a person. It can be the uh, divorce case of a person. It can be an accident a person who recently met with an accident. These things are happening first. Only after that, due to that, this particular latent variable is happening as a result of indicators. Always indicators are the causes. The last result is the construct. For example, stress level. You, measure, you want to measure the stress level. If you measure the stress by measuring that person's, uh, uh, whether he uh, met with an accident, whether uh, he uh, got a divorce recently, for example, whether he lost his job recently, when these things are happening, stress level can be increased. Therefore, first indicators are happening, then only the resultant, uh, what do you call this uh, construct is happening. I think uh, Ms. Yashoda has asked about that, look, the name. Is it clear 
Miss Yashoda? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much. But sometimes there can be, uh, for example, yes. There can be other way around. It can be, you want to measure the stress, but not like a formative model, reflective model. Then your question should be indicated should be something which happened after happening stress. When a person is happening stress, after that, the result of stress are the indicators. Then we call that is something uh, relevant to uh, reflective measurement model. I think there was an example in, uh, I don't know this one. I sent you two documents. There is an example uh, about a person's uh, uh, health behavior. I, you can understand with that. I think I sent you this, that one, right? <clears throat> I think here there's an example. Second uh, PDF. Uh, yes. Can you see this one? It's uh, I have sent you this one. Further read on this one. Reflect you. If you are to measure maybe in a restaurant or somewhere the timeliness with the service quality or something, let's say timeliness as one dimension which is reflective. Why? You measure timeliness by looking at these things. Anything happening because of the timeliness. Accommodation of last minute request. Where the restaurant accommodate at the last minute when the customer is requesting. Punctuality in meeting deadlines. Speed of returning phone calls by the employees. Because of the timeliness is there, as a result, these things are happening. That's why we say reflective. First, construct is happening. Its results we measure to measure the construct. That's the case. But look at another thing, life stress. It can be job loss, uh, divorce, recent accident. First, these things are happening. As a result of that particular larger construct variable is changing. That means these are the causes you measure the causes of the particular construct in the questionnaire. But here you measure not the causes, you measure the results. But in AMOS, you, are, you can only have this reflective. But in PLS, you can have both or totally formative. That's the beauty of this uh, PLS uh, analysis. When you develop a lot of new theories, we call exploratory theory building. Uh, this uh, PLS is very practical in that case. Therefore, read this one. You can see uh, there are a lot of examples of measuring these things, right? I think the second article also, you can see some examples about this formative and reflective. Uh, look at here. This is very interesting. You are measuring a person's cycling fitness. Cycling fitness. You want to measure. Tell me whether this is reflective or formative by looking at the arrows. Reflective. Why? The arrows uh, indica indicate to uh, arrows ahead to indicators. Yes, yes. Indicators are the observable measures in your questionnaire. Let's see. Indicators. Which one is happening first? Whether the variable or the indicators in this case. By looking at the arrows, what is independent? What is dependent? Yeah, heart rate. Yes. Sorry, no, no, no. What is independent? Ah, yes, other way around. Cycling fitness, no? Cycling fitness. Cycling fitness is the thing you want to measure as the independent node, something maybe dependent variable, one of the variable in your model. 
and circle. Then others are the indicators. Now you can see from cycling fitness, arrows are headed towards each and every indicator. That means this is reflective. Why? If you are happening cycling fitness, you are having a good heart rate. Because of the good fitness, the result is sort of a heart rate. By looking at the heart rate, you can measure whether you are having cycling fitness. If you are very fit, that means you are having good heart rate. First, you are fit. Cycling fitness is there. Because of that, the resultant can be good heart rate. Lactate level and the uh, muscle uh, uh, proportion. Everything is fine since you are having good cycling fitness. Result of the cycling fitness are these things. But if you want to measure the same thing from a formative perspective, different questions might be there. Look at now this is formative why? Now your questions measures the causes behind cycling fitness. Now these things, when these things happen, after that only cycling fitness is happening. That's why we say formative construct, formative measurement model. Why? You are having good training. If you're having good training, it's crystal clear that you might have good cycling fitness. We can assume theoretically. If you are very much, if you have very much nutrition, then you might be assumed to have good cyclical cycling fitness. About drug abuse, if you know that information, we can predict whether you are having cycling fitness or not. That means indicators are first happening as the root causes. You are measuring from indicators. Some indicators are formative, some are reflective. Only in PLS you can have this approach. Remember. Read this example, then you can understand what is formative, what is reflective. Many people don't know what is formative in NAMOS. Then these are the independent ones, right? X1, X2, X3. This is the dependent in the formative model. But if you go to reflective one, Construct is independent, right? Others are dependent in that case. But in most of the cases, you need theory, literature review, whether it's a formative or reflective by looking at the past research. That is one method. But we are having confirmatory tetrad analysis. Week number three, we will discuss that. By looking at your data set, you can say whether you are having formative or reflective, no need uh, literature to support for new theory development. If there is no literature, from your analysis, you can uh, conclude. That's a nice aspect of PLS. When there is no past theory to support formative or reflective, PLS help you through the confirmatory tetrad analysis to decide that. Week number three, we will discuss that under advanced analysis. Therefore, read this article also. You can uh, further understand, right? Maybe the first time you see this. Any clarification up to that point, Professor Devasiri? So there are no clarifications from my end, Dinesh. You have done a good job. There's another one in uh, yes, uh, yes, Mr. Sisita Rajapaksha, no? Yes, uh, Mr. Sisita, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, if you could uh, send me the uh, uh, okay, you didn't get the data set. Uh, no, okay, okay. I will email actually. You. I, I post, yes, professor. Yes, Sisita, can you send me a uh, email? Yeah, so, so Sita, we have posted it on the chat. You can download from there. Sure, thank you so much. I'll, I'll do that. Okay, due to power cut continuously, we can't participate uh, the workshop. Therefore, kindly request you to send a copy of. Okay, sure. I will. I am recording. Uh, I will uh, share this with uh, Professor Devasiri. Don't worry. 
Yes, we will be uploading this to our faculty YouTube channel so where you could um, view the uh, video. Yes. Yes. Okay. Then uh, this is a very basic thing, ABC. But next time we will go for uh, higher order models. Uh, I will show you that uh, if you want to know that. You can try to grow that also at home if possible. Try that. This one. I have emailed you this one uh, as the activity. When you come next week after the new year, uh, please try this and come. Then it's much easier. Now you can see here my previous model reputation is there. Price is there, satisfaction is there, loyalty is there. In addition, you can remember I had measured using 11 or 13 items reputation. But you can remember I had two indicators to measure corporate social responsibility, you know, under reputation. Financial performance, maybe two or three indicators. Likewise, these are the dimensions. Sometimes uh, when you do some advanced analysis in the conceptual framework, you are having the larger construct variable under that you are having sub variables or the dimensions. Now, if you want to measure the reputation, you can't measure the reputation directly. It's a very large concept. In order to measure this larger concept, you have to measure some sub concepts. Reputation is having several dimensions, sub dimensions, so sub variables. One is corporate social responsibility, financial performance, uh, governance. Uh, then leadership and the quality. These are also not indicators. These are dimensions. That means these are having indicators. Try to understand. I can't directly measure reputation. I had to measure these six, these six dimensions. To measure these dimensions, I had to measure indicators relevant to corporate social responsibility, uh, financial performance, likewise. We call this is a higher order construct. Why? You can't directly measure reputation, though I did that for a practical example today. That is not the perfect one. This is the correct one. Reputation you can't measure directly, but you have to measure six, sorry, five dimensions. Dimensions you can measure using their respective indicators in the questionnaire, right? Observable ones. Therefore, this is a second order construct. Remember, right? In a, even in AMOS also, you might be familiar with this. We call second order one. Why second order? Reputation is a result of five dimensions. Reputation is higher second order construct, which is a result of these five. These are form of other indicators. We call observable indicators. When you come next week, try to draw that. Sometimes you might get some complications, right? When you try to draw it, but we can discuss, try that. I will, I, I think you got the data set. And I will explain how to draw that also as a help for you to do some homework. I want to have a new construct for reputation. I'll create, select, latent variable. Right. But remember, I am having five dimensions. Five. Now I draw the model for dimensions and the reputation. I rename this, you can remember this, how to rename it. Click on right click, 
rename repute if you want you can uh, somewhat right create the somewhat smaller right to reflect that those are the dimensions somewhat smaller than the normal construct now you can uh, rename one is uh, you can remember those one is quality the other one leadership operational or responsibility or something third one fourth one uh, you can remember what's the fourth one can you remember fourth dimension Yeah, in indicators you can find those governance 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 last one financial performance let's say finance right now this is the case now i'm going to create a higher order model but these three variables are not high order right you can see loyalty is a first order one why it doesn't have any dimensions in this case but loyalty in marketing there are raw dimensions attitude and behavior loyalty but in this case in my example loyalty is a first order construct not a high order one single order latent construct these are latent latent means not directly observable these are the latent indicators we say that in the uh, scm jargon satisfaction is one indicator single indicator construct that is also possible then price is two indicator single order construct but reputation is second order construct with five dimensions high order uh, that is second order construct with five dimensions first i create arrows now i want to select for each dimension the indicators now you can see quality i had i think uh, two no i select this one holding the shift key i go for the second one quality two i drag leadership there are three i select first one hold in the shift key i select all these three and drag then corporate social responsibility i have two indicators select two and drag then governance 1 2 3 sorry finance i have three right now i have created the dimensions and i have another thing i have to create arrow reputation leads to loyalty 
that is also there reputation leads to satisfaction now can someone tell me whether model is uh, ready to be run or incomplete incomplete because yes what's the reason you guess the is still second order construct is red color okay then how can you tell me like uh, can you try how to make it can you tell me all these indicators you had to select and drag onto this reputation we call this is repeated indicator approach if you further read the smart pls advance uh, some articles you will see repeated indicator approach why all these dimensions again to be reflected in reputation why it those are the parts of the parts of the reputation therefore i have to select all these and again drag all these on to the main construct we call repeated indicator repeated no everything is repeated you can see quality one price no not price is not there right sorry price is not there quality one and two not completed still uh, you have to go to leader one two three Yes, governance is also there. Finance, operation officer responsibility, all these. Sorry. You can undo, right? I forgot to tell you. You can do undo here. That option is also there. Redo and undo. That is also there. Now you can see all these are there. Select, click on this, right click, uh, align them to left, right, align them to right. See. Now I hide them, right? If not, this is uh, not clear. I hide those. Hide indicators of the selected construct. Then only you can see this is uh, active now. This is how you create high order construct. Next time we will do how to run this. There are some errors also when you run this. Therefore, you have to be very much careful on running these things. Now you know how to draw this. Then, if you can try to answer the particular uh, hypothesis testing part, right? drawing this i have given you in my pdf which i email the model i order model is there for the reputation now i want you to test this hypothesis if possible try to do this as a homework next time we can discuss i can draw this but perhaps sometimes this data set might not be perfect i have gained this from a large data set and reduced to 95 cases but try to practice and uh, try to do this uh, as a homework when you come next time. This is how you draw high order construct. We call repeated indicator approach. When you're having high order one, latent, sorry, uh, this uh, dimensions indicators, again, you have to uh, drag on to the large construct. Then only this is active. We call repeated indicator approach. Since these are forming this one, Sometimes this can be other way also. You can see. Uh, here also you can do formative reflective. It can be other way also. 
Because this formative reflective talk is everywhere. You can see. Are you okay up to this point? How to draw and run the basic model? Next time we can discuss uh, measurement model more in more detail and also inner model also for this advanced model. But today we did something about the basic model, outer model, inner model, and uh, how to see the reports. Next time also I will do those things in more comprehensively, the reports, analysis. And also next time we will do mediate analysis. Now I want to see in the hypothesis also with the satisfaction mediate, the relationship between loyalty and the uh, repute, uh, reputation. And the other thing is the price, whether price is a moderate. I will show you how to do that also. You can try that too. So now here you can see price affects satisfaction. In addition, price is a moderate as well. How to create the moderate effect? It's very easy. You can select satisfaction. Now you can see your original model. The relationship between satisfaction and reputation moderated by price. No? In this case, satisfaction is a dependent variable to this relationship. Yeah, I go to satisfaction, right click. I create, I put uh, create moderate effect. It's there, add moderating effect. Here also you can do, right? The same option is here, add moderating effect. Then you get some selections. Your moderate variable is, you have to select here. What is price? Independent variable is what? Reputation. You create the moderate effect here. There are two, three methods. One is product indicator approach. The other one is two stage approach. The other one is orthogonalization approach. Orthogonalization approach we use in special cases, right? Sometimes uh, when the key assumptions are not there, uh, sometimes for the residuals analysis, like uh, when you see some different uh, maybe patterns, you can do for other methods like orthogonalization. But here I go for basically product indicator approach. Then I will show what is meant by product indicator approach. Here I use standardized, not a mean centri centralized or any other method. I will go for automatic, but there are different options A, B. When you further read, you can understand what is mode A, what is mode B. But for the basic one, we go for automatic selection. Okay. Now you can see moderator variable is created. This is something different. Now you are having price as independent variable, but this is the moderate effect. You have to create that. This is simply like this arrow. This dotted line arrow. Moderating no. But in PLS, you can show that using this moderate effect headed to a dependent variable. I can show you what is meant a product indicator approach. Right click. Let's select this one. Right click. Show indicators. Can you see? they multiply each of the independent variable indicator by each of the price variable indicator. Can you understand? That's some interaction effect, multiplicative effect. We say that price one indicator by uh, this one. You can see price one indicator by uh, corporate social responsibility two. price one by finance one. All independent variable indicators are multiplied by moderating variable here price indicators. It's very complex. We call interaction effect, moderate effect. That is automatically created. We call product indicator approach, basic approach. Height. Next time we can run the moderation and try to interpret and also mediation, total and indirect effect. Next time we can discuss. Now it's size in six, I think, this is the first time you see some people, therefore you can try to practice. Any clarification next time you can ask. You can be more involved next time than today. Uh, then uh, Professor Devasiri, if no clarification, uh, maybe 20th uh, Wednesday at 4, we will start the second part. Yes, sir. Any, any clarification, I think I will send you the recording also soon uh, by tomorrow. Uh, I think uh, that's the uh, target of our first session. 
any thank you very much dinesh sir thank you very much dinesh sir for enlightening up us on the uh, smart pls on the introductory session so thank you very much for spending your valuable time with us uh erandi are you there it is over to you for the for the vote of thanks okay sir firstly i need to say sorry that i am not been able to continue with my video option because of the power cut in my area it is really a great honor for me to deliver the vote of thanks on behalf of the ahead grant department of accountancy and finance faculty of management studies sabragamba university of sri lanka i would like to offer my sincere gratitude to professor g d samrasingha department of industrial management faculty of business university of moratuwa for sparing his valuable time from the busy schedule to grace this event thank you so much sir the session was really very meaningful and interesting and also i would like to thank professor dg dharmaratna head department of accountancy and finance faculty of management studies sabragamba university of sri lanka then i would like to thank senior lecturer mr malit amar singh project coordinator ahead grant professor jayanta devasiri activity coordinator ahead grant and all the academic staff for their dedication on making this event a success finally i would like to thank all the participants for being with us so again thank you all stay safe and have a good night thank you very much see you next time